Welcome back to The Breakfast. I'm moving away from Princess Diana now. We come down here to Africa. Of course, uh, the 20th of November is uh, celebrated every year as Africa Industrialization Day. And we've invited um, uh, our guest uh, to join us, Mr. Victor Okai, to share his thoughts on where Africa truly is with regards to industrialization. If you remember yesterday, we spoke about the fourth uh, um, industrial revolution Fourth industrial you know and uh, where africa truly is and uh, you know what steps we we need to make how we missed out on the first second and third revolutions uh, but today we're celebrating africa industrialization day and there's so many questions that i believe that we must ask and we must speak on yes indeed um, um i understand uh, we our guest the network went off so as soon as he comes back we'll bring him on uh, the theme for this year is inclusive and sustainable industrialization in the af CFTA era, and that's that trade agreement for those that might not yes. be aware of it. Uh, now, but due to the pandemic, uh, the 2020, uh, they, they usually have a one week um, uh, commemoration. Activities starting from the 16th and ending today um, on the day. Um, a little bit of a background on this uh, the, the 20th of November, that's today, uh, was proclaimed Africa Industrialization Day uh, since the 25th ordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of States and Government of the Organization of the African Union. Uh, we also know the importance of this day um, is to check the challenges, see where we are at, and then see what the challenges are and how we can overcome it to ensure that Africa is indeed the connected hub of um, um, industrialization uh, that is hoped uh, to see. There, there's something that, that's an interesting uh, stats that I'd like to mention here uh, from the UN website. I saw that despite being the second most populated continent in the world, that's about 1.2 billion people, people, Africa represented only 1.4% of the world manufacturing, manufacturing value. I'm going to ask our so guest pretty. why this is so. I'm also going to ask our guest that um, we've had this week-long conference and uh, summit. Okay, I understand he's with us. Um, Mr. Victor Okai, thank you very much uh, for rejoining the conversation. Thank you, for, thank you for having me. So I'll just go straight and ask you, uh, this question, this day, this African Industrialization Day has been on, I mean, officially since 1990. Um, what have we achieved since then? And how have we fared in trying to industrialize Africa? Well, um, not very much, I'm afraid, in terms of uh, industrialization of Africa. And that's because of um, I mean, if you like, a failure of leadership. Um, we uh, have not actually paid attention to, uh, I mean, seriously, to the issue of industrialization. We are more of a consumer nation. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Do you know, uh, Africa today is the raw material basket, if I may use that language, of, of, of the world. Um, Switzerland, the world's greatest producers of chocolate, don't, I mean, they don't grow one, one uh, uh, peopled of, um, uh, of, of cocoa uh, in, in Switzerland. They get all their cocoa from Cote d'Ivoire, from Ghana, and from Nigeria. And, 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 and so they do value addition, and by the time it comes back, you know, here we buy it at several times the cost. So because of this easy money, and you can see that even in petroleum, in Nigeria, I mean, much in the in the in the eighties, for instance, we, when our refineries were working, we were we we were we were we were we were not only producing um, uh, crude oil, we were also exporting, and we were self sufficient in in, in fuel. We didn't have such problems. So easy money has been uh, uh, sadly an easy way out for for African leaders. And so the issue of industrialization has not been given a priority, and we are paying very dearly for it. Uh, we could be, I mean, labor is very cheap, Frank. Okay, you might say infrastructure is not that uh, well developed in this part of the country, but labor is very, very cheap in Africa. A lot of the manufacturing that is outsourced to countries like Thailand, Malaysia, to China, could have been done here if we had 
created the kind of environment that should attract, um, you know, um, uh, if you like, um, co companies to come and then uh, produce here. Because we have all, all it takes. Like I said, labor, which is one of the essential ingredients for industrialization, is present here. But the infrastructure, power, good road network, uh, transportation, some of that is missing, and countries that are smart are beginning to put that in place, and so to ease, you know, the issue of industrialization, both for lo for their local pop uh, for their local uh, businessmen and for outsourcing from bigger economies where labor is very expensive. All right, Mr. Alkai, um, people would argue, and I, I read um, a few articles uh, yesterday uh, quoting. Uh, rather citing uh, Kingsley Morgallo, the former uh, deputy um, governor of the central bank. Um, he, he made, you know, certain statements basically describing African leadership as very wasteful. Um, and from your statements also, you've also alluded that it, it has been a failure of leadership that has kept uh, African industrialization where it is today. Um, but are there other factors that you can also point to that may have, you know, stopped uh, the whole continent from being able to industrialize and to invest a lot more in, in, in industrialization. Uh, people would always mention China and, and, and France and, and, and other uh, countries from the West. But are there other factors that you can point to? Yes. Um, corruption is big on the continent. I'll give you examples. And these are these are not one, not two, not three. I've heard about this. These are real life examples. Um, I'll just illustrate. You find that there are a lot of people who uh, come into this country and want to set up uh, plants. And then, of course, you know, to secure your business, you want a bit of partnership with government. I mean, it doesn't matter even if it's one or five or ten percent, so that succeeding governments don't come and then, you know, just um, destroy or uh, what you have labored for and all that. And then when they come into this country, probably with their local partners, they approach whether the federal government or the state governments. What you find out is politicians who decide that, look, forget the state government. I want to own shares. I want to own majority shares in it. If you don't pay me so much or if you don't give me uh, so many shares, shares which they wouldn't even pay for, then they tell you, sorry, you are not, I'm not going to give you, uh, you're not going to set up this industry here. I mean, stories like this are bound. We, we make a joke. I mean, we, we, we make light of uh, uh, ease of doing business. I give you a country that where ease of doing business is, you know, where, where they don't just mouth it, but it actually works. And that country is Rwanda. I was in Rwanda sometime uh, uh, last year. And, you know, I went there to do training, to train some, some of the people I was invited by the, by, the, by the government. And then... During the session, I found that what I found that the difference between Nigerians and Rwandans, for instance, is that we are, you know, we are more, we are, we are go-getters. We are more, you know, uh, proactive, you know, in doing stuff and all that. And when I talk about registering a business there, they told me that they, uh, you know, they, where, where, where to go to. A, a one-stop, if you like, shopping center where you're able to do your business registration, you, do, you get your tax identification number there, and then the Bank of Rwanda uh, is, or uh, the Bank of Kigali is right there in that building. So you open a bank account, you can do everything. Now, before the class, the session started, maybe at about 9 a.m. or so, I had left around my hotel around 7 a.m. I went there, I, and, and I, I wanted to be sure I was there before 8 when they would open. I got in there, one of the very first people to be there, of course, I wanted to be one person or so before me, and believe it or not, in less than 30 minutes, I had registered a limited liability company. And it didn't require a partner, although Nigeria has started that now under the new, the revised camera, you can have a limited liability company with only one, with only one partner. I registered in less than 30 minutes. I did not pay a dime. Search was done right in front of me. Certificate, as we're finishing, they were sending the certificate for printing just by a printer beside me. And I came out of that place with my certificate. I didn't have time to go into the bank, uh, although I entered the bank to make the inquiry. I didn't open the bank account immediately then because I needed to go, get back to my session. Before right. 11 o'clock, I already have 
I already had on my, on my what do you call it now, my handset, my tax identification number, when I'm supposed to make my first uh, Mr. Kai, we get the picture you're trying to paint. So, um, we get the picture you're painting. Um, a lot more work needs to be done. Um, but th this day has been celebrated for a while, and the essence is to create awareness. Um, it, it, I mean, in your assessment, has this awareness, the conversation like we are having now, had any impact yes. over the years in pushing Africa towards becoming, adding real value to the manufacturing um, I mean, um, chain? Well, we have, to be, we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional. The government has to, you know, hello? Where we see you, go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So, governments have to be intentional. A country like Rwanda is already working in that direction. You have to do everything it takes to attract, to create an atmosphere where businesses can thrive. I can tell you that in that country, foreign businessmen are protected. If you're a local and you cheat, or a, a, a foreign businessman, it doesn't matter if he's from Uganda or Tanzania, if he reports you either as an employee or as a... A, 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 a government official, either you are taking, you are asking for bribe or you are trying to cheat them, the government will not take it lightly at all. Then, the, another thing is that infrastructure is very, very important. We lost Michelin and so many other industries at Dollop and the, that were in this country because our power, our power industry was, I mean, our power sector became comatose. So, infrastructure is very, very important. Ease of business is very, very important. Corruption has to be dealt, not only dealt with, but seen to be dealt with. Because it, otherwise, it discourages uh, foreign businessmen from coming into your country. Then it is also very, very important that you have, we have a deliberate policy of not of adding value to our raw materials before sending them out. Because if you add value, it creates jobs. If you add value down the value chain, you're going to create so many more jobs and you make more money from okay. it. So these are things that governments have to be intentional about if we must industrialize across the continent. Victor, I, I, um, the theme for this year says inclusive and sustainable industrialization in the AFCTA era. Uh, the agreement, of course, should kick off from the 1st of January uh, 2021. What are the possibilities you know, that exist? And how can we truly... Uh, take advantage of the AFCTA and, uh, you know, invest more in industrialization. What does Africa truly stand to gain? I, tr I was going to, you know, bring up Rwanda and Ethiopia uh, later on in the conversation, but you've already spoken extensively on, on Rwanda. So let's talk now on the AFCTA. Um, we're signing agreements, you know, from what you've said, you know, it doesn't seem like we've make it, we're making a lot of efforts, you know, aside just signing paperwork. But what do you think are the possibilities and the things that we can gain as a continent uh, if we take these things seriously? Yeah, there are a lot of advantages because then we have a ready market for our goods. Uh, the standards are not as high across Africa and we need time to grow and develop. I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm doing, if I'm processing cocoa locally, um, the standards for exporting a cocoa beverage to Europe is not going to be as high as the standard for exporting it, for instance, across Nigeria or across the border to Ghana and to some of the other African countries. Now, what the African Free Continental Trade Agreement does is take away barriers, custom barriers, immigration barriers for doing business across the continent. So we can have, we are able to do business across the continent. We have a ready market a huge market, you know, across the continent of close to a billion, a close to a billion people or thereabouts, you know. So you can do, you can make, you can produce your product in Nigeria, and you know that the rest of Africa is your is your market. And so whatever it is you're doing here, whether it is furniture, whether it is fashion, whether it is um, uh, cosmetics, you know how you then have a huge market. So it helps us to grow our industrial base beyond signing papers. I think that if the implementation is properly carried out, it will help to industrialize the continent. Uh, what are some of the hiccups you see uh, going forward that would seriously impede um, the implementation of this agreement? Because we're already seeing pockets of um, uh, dissent coming up. 
Yeah, that's a very good question. Now, hiccups will then come from the attitude of individual governments. A case in point being what just happened in Ghana, where Nigerians were in ECOWAS, which uh, is supposed to be a, you know, a, a sub-regional uh, um, base where economic uh, unit where we're supposed to freely move, you know, without any serious custom or immigration barriers, do our businesses and all of that. But Ghanaians decide to pick on Nigerians and, and Nigerian businesses. And you find when you begin to have problems like that, then obviously it negates the true spirit of the African Free Continental Trade Agreement. So uh, the, the, our leaders have to address that. We have to be uh, faithful to the true spirit of uh, those that have decided to create the, uh, this uh, trade agreement so that we can truly, truly uh, produce and be sure that we will not be discriminated against. And this African Continental Free Trade Agreement is not just about goods, it's also about services. I can export my services to any country and, and expect to be paid and not be discriminated against. You know, So it's going to grow the continent and its businesses and its businessmen. If right, Angote can get up from here and be sure that it can sell cement across the continent. That's you know? the mud time will permit us. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. And uh, we're hopeful that uh, the industrialization we'll seek will at least come to pass in our lifetime. Yes. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.